Massive islands of plastic garbage floating in the ocean, some islands as big as a country. 100 million tons of plastic garbage choking marine animals, killing one and a half million of them each year. That's the story that got so many of us to start carrying our own reusable bags to Walmart and to the grocery store. Now, the same scientist who told us this story has a new story. Will it change our behavior again? I'm PJTV Scott Ott, joined now by Stephen Green and Bill Whittle. And men, 100 million tons of floating plastic clotting the ocean in country-sized islands actually inspired 100 cities in California to ban single-use plastic bags and countless millions of us to BYOB to the grocery store. But now, Andres Cozar of the University of Cadiz in Spain, the same scientist who made the 100 million ton estimate, did another study. And Professor Kozar revised that figure downward by a factor of 14,285. He now says, would you believe 7,000 tons? Or 35,000 at the most, not 100 million tons. But wait, there's more. According to, the, to sfgate.com, Kozar's team didn't find country-sized islands of plastic bags strangling baby birds and sea turtles. It found microplastics. What people think of as a dump doesn't look like floating junk. Instead, ocean current convergent zones are swirling with flecks of plastic like, like a snow globe half a minute after shaking, with considerably less plastic trash than expected. You see, the plastic bags and other petroleum-based detritus have apparently done what they were designed to do. They biodegraded. But the Surfrider Foundation, among others, wants us to think that all plastic items last forever, and they still cite the debunked 100 million ton figure on their website as they raise money to increase public awareness. Now, Stephen Green, people are slobs, and they throw too much trash oh. on the ground and in the water. <laughs> if, if these environmental groups don't exaggerate the threat, they'll never get our attention. So what's the harm in overestimating oceanic garbage, even by 14,285 times, if it gets people to take action to clean up the oceans, which do, in fact, have some garbage in them? What's wrong? Yeah, uh, you know, I, I love public awareness. I, I love the idea that people can be made aware of problems that don't exist by people patting their own pockets on, uh, on these kind of scare tactics. No, this is, this is, this, this, I'm sorry, I can't even be obnoxious about this. This is, this is really good news. We should be celebrating this. Apparently we do still have a problem, but it's a much smaller problem. It looks like it might be a manageable problem, and these plastics aren't clogging up our, our oceans in a, in a thing the size of Bulgaria. The only real problem I see now is that I had thought maybe we had a, uh, a solution to our immigration crisis, that if we had this, this free country just, just kind of swirling around the Indian Ocean or someplace, <laughs> that we could, we could uh, declare it uh, Immigrantlandia or something and, uh, and, and let people go there. We could give them UN status, the whole works. Well, now that is uh, quite literally down the drain. Well, Bill Whittle, uh, the estimate of marine animals who die each year from, I suppose, lack of a Heimlich maneuver to dislodge the plastic from their gullets has dropped from 1.5 million to just 100,000. But even that figure has no actual data to back it up. Are you afraid that these new numbers will send the signal that the crisis has been averted and that people will go back to the bad old days of getting plastic grocery bags from the store instead of carrying cloth bags to the store? Well, first of all, uh, I've, I live in uh, most of the cities. I, I, I live in Sherman Oaks. There's a plastic uh, bag ban there. Santa Monica's got a plastic bag ban. And if you are not a victim of this lunacy, you have forgotten how god-awful a paper bag actually is, how utterly worthless they are in terms of getting things out to your car. You have to hold them up here like this. They break, they rip. If there's anything damp in there, it immediately the bottom falls out. They're worthless. Now, I had thought that I was being subjected to this to this loss of the convenience of the plastic bag because of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of research scientists who had, who had absolutely mapped all this stuff out and had given people reasonable scientific data. Turns out, it's one doobie smoking loser in in <laughs> South America. One guy, one guy Spain, Spain. wrote a report that was or Spain was off by fourteen thousand percent. One guy wrote a paper, and now a hundred cities in California have changed their 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 policies. Look, 
when you realize that this is what's happened, you realize that, number one, there is no media in this country. There is no free press in this country, none. There is only the propaganda wing of the socialist movement in the world. That's all that's left. The idea that one guy could write one paper and have this kind of fallout and have this belief be promulgated throughout the world is insane to me. Secondly, it turns out that, yes, this is a completely overblown issue like all the other overblown issues. And finally, the thing I'd like to say to those liberals out there who think we're just a bunch of heartless idiots, if it turned out the data did in fact say that the Earth is going to catch fire through human activity, then I'd be all about curbing our carbon emissions. The fact is, it doesn't say that at all. They can't make it say that. They have to lie about it. They have to manipulate the data. They have to just plain lie. If it turned out that health care was free, I'd be in favor of free health care. So all of the stuff that's used to demonize conservatives, it turns out, Scotty, it's just not true. And the final thing I'll say about this plastic bag thing and that ad of that sperm whale basically diving into, a, into a, just a, a living playground of, of plastic is this. We get accused of things for which there is no evidence. This happened when the Tea Party got started. They were accused of racism, about how racist the Tea Party is. And because there was no, ace, no evidence of racism in the Tea Party, leftists made racist banners and signs and took them to Tea Party events to prove a fact that didn't exist in the first place. That's how desperate these people are. It's how evil, evil, evil these people really are. Well, the worst casualty in this story is not our formerly pristine oceans or their formerly living marine fauna, but the erstwhile credible human pursuit called science. Yep. When nonprofits latch onto the sketchy data, this kind of sketchy data to fuel their fat paychecks and their crony relationships with lawmakers, the scientific enterprise becomes hucksterism. And frankly, I don't believe the new data either because it seems to be driven by a cause, not merely empirical research. Computer programmers have a name for the kind of information we get from this kind of process. Garbage in, garbage out. For Bill Whittle, Stephen Green, and the entire Trifecta crew at PJTV.com, I'm Scott Ott.